Auntie Jane. <laughs> Whenever a scene called for me to belt her one, she had Aldrich, the director, bring in her double. I knew how to clip her without hurting her. Ah, oh, Crawford was no pro. You know in that scene when I had to carry her from the bed into the hallway? That bitch weighted herself down with a lead belt. <laughs> I nearly broke my fucking back. Miss Davis, what about that classic scene where you're pushing Crawford in the wheelchair and she says to you in that breathy voice, Oh, Jane, Jane, if only I weren't in this chair. But you are. You are in that chair, Blanche. <laughs> Worst of all, in that scene where the old bag was croaking on the beach, she strapped on a pair of falsies that made her look like the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> John, can you imagine a pair of giant tits jutting up towards the sky. And John retorted, they worked for me. <laughs> Mr. Fuller, you are obsessed with Crawford. Betty, John said, the only thing I'm obsessed with is a sudden increase in the cost of living around here. And he stormed out of the room. Oh, Elizabeth, while I was making one of my calls to Italy, your friend Grace called, you know, Miss Little Light of Mine. She said something about coming over here tomorrow. Talk to her when she's dead. <laughs> she was a pain in the ass when she was alive. Miss Davis, I know you think that this is just a silly toy, but it really works. Oh, <laughs> Ruthie had one of these. Yeah, she needed it. Nobody alive would talk to her. <laughs> Miss Davis, we have to remember that when we conjure up discarnate entities, we really what have to... What the hell are you talking about? Miss Davis, discarnate entities are people who have died. Ducky. First, I'm going to lead us into an altered state of consciousness through a deep breathing process. <laughs> Where is Shirley MacLaine? <laughs> Let's begin by closing our eyes. Breathe in peace and love, exhale disharmony. Breathe in peace and love, exhale disharmony. Breathe in peace. Oh, get on with it, will you? <laughs> Please place the tips of your fingers very lightly on this little triangle. Imagine yourself wrapped in a spiritual white light while we ask our higher powers to allow us to communicate to those we have loved in life. Ruthie, we are now open as channels. Please come through with a message for your daughter. She's here. Ruthie, how the hell are you? <laughs> w. Well, she says she's well. Well? You're dead! <laughs> Capital D-E-A-D, -E dead! You're in a marble sarcophagus at Forest Lawn. I even have music piped in. Everything but call waiting. <laughs> Miss Davis, this is a spirit far removed from Forest Lawn. Your mother is now a living spiritual entity. How quaint. Ruthie, I wish you were down here to read B.D.'s Dee charming book. What a splendid piece of... I have to pick enough berries for a pie. John will love it. He doesn't know how I can bake. Then we can stop by and get one of those already prepared pie shells. It's one of those perfect days. The late morning sun peeking in and out of the clouds. Fragrant wildflowers scenting the country air. And Jezebel at my side plucking raspberries and singing. I've written a letter to Daddy. His address is heaven above. 